We have a final Houston Texans preseason depth chart. CJ Stroud still QB1. Let's react to it all. Plus talk about why the Texans decided to cancel joint practices with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk. Yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle is what we really do. We the source. We the posts of the city too. Welcome to the locker room. Number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app. Subscribe, like, ride along. It is the number one place to get your Texans information, the pulse of what's going on from people in the mix that cover it uh, every single day, daily, uh, at practices, at games, uh, talk to players weekly, talk to coaches, front office, most connected source for digital content here, radio content, 10 to 2, Central, Monday through Friday, Sports Radio 610. And the Odyssey app. We have a depth chart. We have a final preseason depth chart for the Houston Texans. And of course the main story, it's always the main story, even if it's not a story, uh, CJ Stroud is quarterback one. And it's only a matter of time before the announcement comes down that CJ Stroud will be the starter against the Baltimore Ravens. Now we should already know that. And we do know that it's very clear. He's getting all the first team reps. He started every game. We know this hadn't been a competition for a while. They kind of put that to bed. Now, when will they make it officially official? Who knows? Maybe next Monday. Maybe they'll wait till after the preseason concludes. Maybe after they put out the 53-man roster, uh, which we'll get into. But the Texans have released the final preseason depth chart to to the surprise of no one. C.J. Stroud is QB1. Let's look at this depth chart because there are a couple of things that catch my attention when it comes to this. And this is on the Houston Texans website. Of course, you have the quarterback right there. No surprise. Uh, Case Keenum right now hurt. Are they going to keep a third quarterback? That's a question. Running back um, number three, Mike Boone and Dare appear to be in competition. I anticipate both of those guys getting opportunities uh, to carry the rock. Might be kind of a hint, though, based on the usage. Like if we see Dare out there more than Mike Boone, Maybe that means that Boone, for the moment, is safe. So we could get a context clue uh, in that regard on Sunday. Fullback is Andrew Beck. Uh, Could that mean more for another position? We'll get into that. And then your wide receivers really haven't changed. Woods, Collins, Brown, Dell, Mechie, and Hutchinson appear to be safe. Maybe Steven Sims gets on the practice squad, but those are going to be your six guys. And then the tight end position, uh, Dalton Schultz and Mason Shrek, and then Quitteriano. Uh, if I had, if they were going to keep three tight ends, I would say Shrek is the third right now. Although, stay tuned on that because there are more thoughts about that. You're starting offensive line. You already know that. Uh, backup offensive line, a little bit up in the air. And then the defense has been set for a while. Really, the defense has been set since camp. Actually got a little bit of a boost uh, with Christian Kirksey being out and Cashman taking over for him at the Sam position. Uh, And then the cornerback safeties, uh, we probably could have filled out the 53, at least the defensive half, uh, probably day one of training camp. A couple of things that stick out about this depth chart. And again, subscribe, like, right along. This is the number one uh, source for Texans daily digital content, the locker room. Uh, If you're a Texans fan, welcome. If you're not, welcome. Getting the pulse of uh, what's going on. Uh, The first thing that sticks out here, Uh, from the Texans depth chart is there appears to be no competition for starting positions. Like we already know who the starters are, whether that's a good thing, whether that's a bad thing, who knows, but we're not sitting here saying, all right, who's going to win this, this cornerback job, or who's going to win this starting wide receiver job, or who's going to win that. And I don't even look at uh, wide receivers and who starts and who doesn't uh, as like a big thing. Like if Tank Dell starts on the sidelines, he's probably going to be out there on second or third down. He's probably going to play a large portion of the snaps, but there's really no competition at this point that the center competition might've been what would have been the biggest competition um, between Questenberry and Juice Scruggs. But with Questenberry getting hurt, Juice Scruggs has stepped in and Juice Scruggs has done a nice job. Um, The other offensive line positions were set. You knew who your starting tight end was, you know, who your starting running back is, you know, who your starting fullback is. And on defense, I mean, you had that, 
said as well. So there's really observation number one, there's no competition um, for starting spots. Uh, Texans cap, uh, shout out to Texans cap at Texans cap on Twitter. Uh, shout out to him doing his digital thing here. Uh, one of my good friends, Texans cap, uh, he put out the position battles and I kind of want to touch on this before we get to observation number two about this depth chart, uh, position battles from Texans cap, uh, third tight end running back three linebacker, five, six D tackle four, five and cornerback six with a question mark. The tight end three one is interesting because I do wonder if the fact that Andrew Beck is probably your second or third best tight end already and plays fullback, and they're probably not going to have a fullback majority of the time, I wonder if that will come into play when it comes to how they decide to equal out the roster and decide, you know, how many guys to keep at each spot. I do wonder if that impacts it. The fact that a lot of teams don't keep fullbacks. You have a fullback who can also play tight end. Does that impact the desire, the need uh, to have three tight ends, or does it kind of minimize that? The running back three is interesting. Again, I think this will be a big context clue. We might see Boone and Dare um, both playing equally on Sunday, but I think if we see one playing more than the other, that could almost mean that the other is safe. Or it could mean they're trying to see if that guy can carry the load. But for me, if Mike Boone doesn't play as much as Dare, I think Dare is trying to work his way onto the squad. Other thing is with the Beck thing, Beck is on special teams too. Uh, and he's on kickoff team. Linebacker 5-6 is interesting. The, the Christian Kirksey thing. I, I think Christian Kirksey should be done. Four and a half million, five million, whatever it is. Uh, I think he should be done. Um, I also wonder if maybe the fifth or sixth linebacker, whatever they decide, is even on the team up to this point. I'll get to that a little bit later as the observations continue. D-tackle 4-5. I think Kurt Heinisch and Roy Lopez are both safe. Uh, I think Kurt Heinisch has kind of established himself. He's kind of proven himself. Uh, I know Lopez got nicked up. I think those guys are safe. Um, so if I were betting, I think they keep five defensive tackles. I think both of those guys are on. And then cornerback six. Do they need to keep six quarterback uh, cornerbacks uh, would be my question. Now, I know Eric Murray is not a guy that you want starting. He's not a guy you want as your starting nickel, but he does have cornerback experience. And that goes into – that's useful versatility. Not the Bill O'Brien versatility, but that's useful versatility. So your backup safety can guard, try to guard guys in the slot and do that type of thing. Jimmy Ward's one of the most respected nickelbacks in the league. Uh, I know he's a safety – but he can do some corner things. So do they feel the need to keep six cornerbacks? That's something to keep an eye on. Shout out to Texans cap uh, for those questions. Now, observation number two, which is kind of good to uh, kind of piggyback off that. A lot of these guys in quote position battles on the back end of the roster, they're hanging by less than a thread. And let me explain this. I don't think the Texans can go out. They might be able to, can go out and find someone that's significantly immediately better than Kurt Heinisch uh, at defensive tackle. And he's on the back end of the of the D-line depth chart. I don't think they can do that. Uh, he's kind of established himself here. Um, he plays good in games. Uh, I think they like him. So I don't think they can just go out when the, when the – when cuts are made and find a guy like Kurt Heinisch and the Texans, by the way, are going to be number two in waivers uh, when that time comes. I think they can find someone who's better than Austin Deculus on the street. I think you can find a Christian Kirksey uh, on the street. I think you can find uh, a cornerback, assuming that you decide to keep six, that is better than whoever they decide to keep at six on the street. I think you might be able to find a tight end better than Mason Shrek on the street. Might even be able to find a running back if you're going to keep four on the street. So all these guys that we say, you know, you're hanging by a thread. You remember when you used to watch Hard Knocks and you're like, all right, this guy made the team. Great. That's great. And he gets cut two days later. Given the fact that they have waiver wire number two and given the fact that the positions that we're talking about, that reserve tight end, reserve running back, reserve linebacker and reserve cornerback are positions that are 
quote, a little bit easier to find on the street. I would say that these guys that are, that are that are hanging by a thread, they're hanging by less than a thread. Observation number three uh, with the Texans depth chart is the locker room number one source for Texans daily digital content is the potential versatility impact that we just kind of touched on. If Andrew Beck is one of your three best tight ends and he's also a fullback, and fullback is a position where some people don't even carry a fullback, do you need to carry three tight ends? Do you feel the need to carry three tight ends? If Jimmy Ward and Eric Murray have experience playing corner and they're able to do things that you would ask your sixth corner to do, do you need to keep that many corners? It's going to be a question to uh, to ask. Uh, does Dare's ability to play special teams, Dare O, does that matter as much, especially now that the kickoff is all but eliminated? Still have punt team, but does that matter as much? That's going to be something that's going to be interesting to keep an eye on uh, as well. Observation number four, uh, given the clear picture, do we need to see the starters anymore in the preseason? My vote would be no. I don't need to see any more from 99% of the starters at this point. Now, do I feel 100% confident in the interior of the offensive line? Do I feel 100% confident in what the offense has put out there? No. But I still don't need to see much more. I know what a lot of these guys are. It's almost time to get ready for Baltimore. And observation number five, a large portion of the starters, specifically on defense, have shown major flashes during camp. I think that's the most significant thing to keep an eye on. And I talked about Jalen Petrie, um, Derek Stingley, and Christian Harris in my last video. But a large, a, a large portion of these starters, and we know D'Amico Ryans is a defensive coach, I'm starting to wonder how good can this defense be. And we can go through the whole defense, and it's at, at points they've shown major flashes in camp. Steven Nelson's been great. Derek Stingley's been great. Jalen Petrie looks the part. Jimmy Ward looks the part. Uh, Denzel Perriman, he's been better in coverage than advertised. He looks good. Christian Harris looks good. Uh, Blake Cashman looks like a clear upgrade uh, over Christian Kirksey. Um, Malik Collins, nobody can really block him. Uh, Sheldon Rankins, he had an excellent preseason game, too. You saw him all over the place. Will Anderson, don't need to say much more about that. Uh, and then you have Jerry Hughes and Grenard and all these uh, the, the guys behind them. A large portion of these starters on defense have shown major flashes uh, during camp. This defense could be very, very good. This could be a top half uh, type of defense, and there's a lot of upside with these guys. Uh, so those are the five observations. Number one, no competition for the starting positions. Number two, the guys in the position battles are hanging by less than a thread. Number three, the potential versatility impact. Number four, given the clear picture, do we need to see starters anymore in the preseason? And number five, uh, a large portion of the starters, specifically on defense, have shown major flashes during camp. Those are really the biggest takeaways from the depth chart. Uh, other news, and I guess you can kind of connect this um, to the talk about the depth chart. The Texans canceled joint practices with the Saints. Why it might make sense. I, I think at this point, it's time to get ready for Baltimore. It's time to, I mean, I do the Texans really need to even like watch tape on the Saints for what? I mean, maybe, maybe you check out some things, but at this point, it's time to get ready for Baltimore. Put in that tape from yesterday. Put in that tape from week one. Check out their defense from last year. It's going to be a new offense. Get ready for Baltimore. You got 20 days, three weeks, whatever, um, to, to get ready for the Ravens. You need to be worrying about the Saints. Stay home. Sleep in your own bed. Get ready for Baltimore. That's where they're at. C.J. Stroud will be the starter. Uh, it'll just be a matter of when, not if, uh, they name him the starter. Uh, appreciate everyone for coming through. Subscribe, like, uh, ride along. Uh, be sure to like the video when you leave. Uh, and we will have more uh, throughout the week, little live stream action. 
Uh, I'm on daddy duty this week. Just had my first born uh, on the uh, the 18th, um, but I'm still in the mix here uh, in the digital game. Appreciate everyone for coming through. Let me know what you think about the depth chart. Let me know what you think about the position battles. Let me know where I said something stupid because it's a very, very high possibility and cussing and discussing is always fun. Uh, no matter what happens, though, when it comes to this Texan stuff, we are all in this together. Appreciate you for coming through. Hey, locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk. Yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle is what we really do. We the source. We the first in the city, too. Landlock. Got the game in the headlock. Localize every time. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, we top two and we not two. Plugged in daily digital on YouTube.